Greetings everyone, E.E.K. Mopar Man here. Today we are looking at my latest project, which I just started yesterday, so it is a wiry mess. Uh, initial warning, don't try this at home. This is uh, messing with electrical stuff, and I am crazy. Um, I've fortunately not burned down the house yet, but I don't want to encourage anybody else to go out there and do this. I'm doing this so that you don't have to. <laughs> um, anyway, what I thought about yesterday is I have all these old Chrysler digital gauge clusters lying around, and I am so tired of tearing apart my own cars and rewiring different things just to test these damn things. So I've decided that I wanted to have some sort of a power supply that I could use to power these things up and test them. Well, this old LC2 that's sitting here it provided me with a power supply that actually will drive these Chrysler electronics. It has a plus 12 volt, plus 5 volt, minus 5 volt, and ground obviously. And it puts out almost one amp of power, so plenty enough to drive these uh, simple electronics like these. And I finally found, I finally got around to testing my uh, controller box here, which will give us alerts as far as uh, oil pressure and uh, coolant temperature and you know fuel level and lusher fluid and all that kind of fun stuff. And that drives the uh, and is driving the gauges on the display. I have not yet had a chance to build a proper case for my experiment here, but I intend on getting a box of some sort to mount these electronics and the wiring, uh, bolt up a number of uh, rocker switches, maybe some uh, rheostats to change the voltage going to the various gauges for testing purposes, and hell, why not just to have it as maybe build some sort of a driving simulator, see if maybe we can somehow get it interfaced with uh, BeamNG.Drive. Wouldn't that be cool if we could uh, coax these things into working, so, with that type of thing. Anyway, um, the gauge cluster itself here, I have all of the major uh, powers, power cables and whatnot tied off and uh, got electrical tape on those to prevent any shorts. Also have the positives uh, all tied off on the alert box as well. And uh, these exposed wires are all for the various uh, alert signals. Um, you see any of the alerts that come up function off of simple grounds. So if a uh, the engine is low on oil pressure, it simply goes to ground, and that's what tells the cluster and the box here that the oil pressure is low and to give the appropriate warnings. Same with fuel, same with uh, temperature, same with voltage, same with if you leave your door open, um, same if you don't put on your seat belt, uh, same with the parking brake, you know, all those various uh, alerts that it will tell you about and uh, put messages on the display. So anyway, I've uh, borrowed the power supply from this LC2. It is not actually plugged into the LC2 anymore. It is simply providing power for the electronics for the car stuff. And I've also borrowed the LC2 speaker for demonstration purposes of the alert box. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and switch this thing on and see if it works. Your fuel is low. All right, well, the electronic voice alert is working. It just notified us that our fuel is low, and in fact, the system does believe that the fuel is low, although not empty. Currently, it sees that there is oil pressure, although albeit a bit too much. Uh, it believes that the voltage is a little bit low, and it believes that uh, the coolant is currently cold, 
We've got our check gauges light on as a result of the low voltage right now and the anti-lock light and the parking brake light and the seatbelt light and the high beam light and the check engine light and all that kind of fun stuff. All that's wired up and functioning. So let's see what happens if I ground out something on here. So let's start with this ground. This is for the oil pressure gauge. So let's see what it does when I push these together. Your engine oil pressure is low. Prompt service is required. All right, so it sees the oil pressure is low now. And if I let go of the wires, there we go. Oil pressure is creeping right back up. And we're right back where it should be. All right, so what about the coolant temperature? So the coolant temperature, once it reads that it's hot, I believe it takes about 45 seconds for it to actually give us the audible warning. I guess Chrysler figured that uh, maybe the cooling fan hadn't kicked on yet, and uh, okay, that was weird. The TV just kicked on. Let's uh, power that off. Can't make a video without something going wrong. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, I believe it uh, takes 45 seconds from the time it's uh, grounded and uh, senses that it's overheating for it to actually give us the audible message. So um, let's go ahead and push those wires together and we'll count the flashes because they fly the flashes on the warnings symbols there seem to go at one second intervals so starting right now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and so on we'll see if it uh, actually works Right on the tick. That's pretty cool. Let go of the wires, and now the gauge is gonna come right back down again. Now, as far as the control module over here is concerned, we have not yet uh, gone anywhere. The engine's just been sitting and it's been idling. So, if I were to ground this uh, speedometer sensor here, which uh, works on a pulsing ground, it should tell us to fasten our seatbelts because it believes we haven't fastened our seatbelts yet. So let's see if it will do that. Please fasten your seatbelts. It worked. So let's, uh, we can go ahead and stop now. All right, now let's try an even trickier one. Let's see what happens if I get the speedometer signal and the door jar and the ground together. Let's see if it will talk to us about a door being open. Come on, you can do it. A door is a jar. There we go. Thank you. And it thinks that we uh, closed the door now, too. So that's why it thanked us. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's see. What else do I have set up here? I think I've got a, a wire for the washer fluid. I think that's what this one is. Maybe not. Let's see. I'm trying to keep this box up. Oops. Let's see here. We got the 
coolant temperature on all the doors. We've got the speaker. We've got the fuel. Which one of these is the washer fluid? I am pretty sure it is one of these two. Alright, well it hasn't uh, given us the warning yet. So I'm going to guess that, that one must not be it. So maybe it is this one. I think there's a five second delay on this one. Your washer fluid is low. Right on the tick again. There's the washer fluid. So uh, it tells us the washer fluid is low. Um, as far as the charging system malfunctioning, I think that has a function of voltage. So I don't think I'm really going to be able to get it to tell us that the voltage is low because, well, it kind of runs at a fixed, uh, fixed state. Well, anyway, guys, that is uh, the beginnings of my project with this uh, setup. I'm going to see if we can build a box and put some rheostats and some switches on there. See if we can actually build a functioning prototype and from there maybe we can build a microcontroller to interface with beamng.drive. That would be pretty cool. Alright, well we'll go ahead and power it down now. And uh, anyway, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.